What's up, everybody? We got a weekend special when Sarah Boone is back in court. We have been waiting since we hit 200,000 subscribers to go to the courthouse in Orlando and watch part of this trial. That was the deal. We were going to do it. Report from the courthouse. What's the jury seem like? Are they interested? Do they like? Are they buying Sarah Boone's story? How's it going for her? Well, today we're going to break down this hearing. Her new lawyer. A lot of people have a lot of hope. We broke down. We went over her website, broke down what she's good at, what she specializes in, how we think it's going to work for her in our last video. Well, today is the first time we get to see her in court. And we'll see. Does it seem like she and Sarah Boone have a good relationship? Is she going to push this case to trial? Or will there be more delays that we're going to hear about later in letters? Is Sarah Boone starting to stack objections and problems she has with her lawyer after this hearing? Or do they seem to be on the same page? And that's what we're going to focus on in today's video. So this is Sarah Boone's new lawyer, and um, we are supposed to be going to trial in Sarah Boone's case in May of this year, which is, yeah, one month from now. The year is already flying by, but one month from now, we are supposed to go to trial in Sarah Boone's case. Said it was possible, but unlikely. Uh, more realistically, end of 2024, beginning of 2025 is when I thought this trial could go with a new lawyer on the case, but I was hopeful that maybe... If she focused all of her attention on this, she would be able to push this case and have a chance on May 15th. It just seems so unlikely with the expert issues, the funding issues, and then, of course, Sarah Boone issues with all of the discoveries she wanted to go through, all the questions she had, which are absolutely okay for a criminal defendant to have, and her lawyer should absolutely answer all those. It just depends. Can they get through it all in a couple meetings, or is it every time they talk she has another list of questions? That can make things take longer no matter who the lawyer is. So let's take a listen to this hearing and see exactly how it went. I um, obviously am not going to be ready for trial in May. We had discussed that on the day of the appointment. Well, there you go. Obviously, she's not going to be ready for trial in May. And that's just how this stuff works. Nobody's mad. The judge isn't mad. If she explained it to Sarah Boone, Sarah Boone shouldn't be mad. And, and this lawyer's type of personality, again, and we broke it down in detail in the last video, but if she's pretty stern and to the point, her first meeting with Sarah Boone, I expect went something like this. Ms. Boone, listen, I'm going to do the best I can, but you have to trust me. If you don't trust me, it's not going to work out for you. It's not going to work out for me. And there's no way I can just snap my fingers and go to trial and you shouldn't want me to. If you want me to just go to trial tomorrow, what do you think is going to happen? We're going to lose. I'm not going to be prepared. So let me be prepared. I'll prove to you I'm working, but you got to prove to me that we can work together. And that's it. And then what I say goes as the lawyer. If I say we need a continuance, we need a continuance. And I think hopefully Sarah Boone can understand that and we'll do that. Unlike some of the other lawyers where Sarah Boone just thought they weren't even working on her case, so she didn't respect them and it was a lot harder to work with them and understand why the case was getting delayed. So let's hear some of the reasons why and when the new trial is going to get set. I have been in contact with Mr. Cacciatore. It was my suggestion. Cacciatore is the uh, prosecutor. To set a status hearing 90 days out. I've got depositions set on May 7th, and there are likely to be pretrial motions that will need to be filed. The state was asking that the status hearing be in 60 days. At that time, I think we'll be closer to being able to inform the court what we believe will be a trial date that we'd be ready for. Mr. Cacciatore, anything to add to that? No, nothing to add to that. How much time, if you were to ballpark it, how much time do you think you would need in order to be ready for trial? I'm just planning ahead, looking at my trial grid for when we have availability based what I have already have specially set, see if we could kind of work backwards from, from that way. It's difficult to say at this point. I believe I'll be in a better position. Judges always want to like, at least push lawyers for an answer like this because then the lawyer will push to have the trial done on that day. If there's no day and it's just open, things do tend to lag more. And to give you an answer to that, um, I've hired an expert and a number of things are dependent on completion of her evaluation and where we're going to go from there in the case. It is my hope that... There's an expert... There are evaluations. 
There are depositions. So while we heard multiple times with other lawyers that this stuff needed to get done, time would go by and none of it would really get done. But what has this lawyer already done in not that long of a time? Scheduled depositions, probably taken some depositions, gotten a, an expert, and is working towards the defense in the case. Now, we don't know if they're going to continue with battered spouse syndrome. We don't know that yet. But this lawyer is moving the case down the road. And that's what I'm saying. If you show your client you're working, which is not like a, a fake thing where you <clears throat> use smoke and mirrors and make it look like you're working really hard when you're not. But I mean, when you tell them, okay, we got the expert. We need to do your evaluation. I've set these three depositions of these three people. Oh, this is what they said at their deposition. They're going to understand if the case needs to get continued because you they know you're working on their case. And it seems like that's what this lawyer is doing so far for Sarah Boone. I'm hopeful. I was hopeful for the last guy too. And I'm hopeful for her. But if, if the best indicator of future action is based on past actions, it's probably not going to go well for this lawyer, but we can have hope in the beginning. And it seems like she's getting a lot of work done. At the next status hearing, I will have gotten those things completed with regard to the expert and at that point be able to answer that. She does not look happy. Does she look satisfied? I don't know, but she does not look happy. I can set you, which is a also, will they try to use these types of clips to remove cameras from the courtroom? I haven't seen much fight about that just yet. But in her letters, it seems like she's not really happy with how much media attention she's getting. Um, and they're zooming in on her face. And this was one of the big arguments for Lori Vallow for them removing cameras. Approximately 58 days out. June. So he's going to set the status hearing 58 days out, two months out, basically. June 10th. June 10th. And she does not look happy about that, right? Pushing this out June 10th. So her next status hearing is going to be after when she was supposed to have her trial date, which is trial date number umpteen. I may be in trial in front of Judge Chu that week just to let the court know. Um, and again, she's working on other cases. Most lawyers are. The Koberger situation and some of these other situations and trials that we've watched where these they're having hearings every week and stuff is getting pushed so fast. I mean, Koberger especially is just so unusual. That is not usually how it is. Unfortunately, if we were going to say the average in America, what is a case more like Sarah Boone's or Brian Koberger? It's probably more like Sarah Boone when you have court appointed counsel. If that is the case, I may need to move it last minute. I, it, is, it is the beginning of your trial period with Judge Chu that Monday, the 10th. I do really like this judge too. And I told you I, I recognized his face, but I didn't know his name. Um, because he coached a mock trial team and we're not able to really get into some of the backgrounds and stuff at one of the competitions and they ended up winning and we talked afterwards. And I knew it was Mike, but uh, it was really cool to see that he's the judge now in this case. Yes, it's the first day of the trial period, sir. Okay. If we were to set you then for the uh, Friday before the Sabbath. I'm available. Mr. Castori. I mean, it is stressful to think about that. She's going to have this Sarah Boone high profile case with all the cameras on her pre-trial to try to figure this stuff out, hammer a lot of this stuff out with a difficult client sitting over there Friday before she starts a trial for a different case on Monday. It's hard work. It's really stressful. As I'm saying, I like to sometimes get into the background and see like what all lawyers have to do and go through and what's going through their head when they come to these hearings, especially when people are like, oh, they stumbled over this or how could they possibly want to delay it? It's so unfair, blah, blah, blah. And some of them are. And that's why when lawyers are jerks or they just don't talk to their clients, I don't think that's a good thing. But a lot of lawyers are overworked and it is hard. So we have to understand that even when they come into trial, sometimes they got a lot of stuff going on. They got other cases, they got families, they're people. So it's, it's just interesting to see how the, the calendars end up lining up for some lawyers sometimes. Uh, I'm available too, Your Honor. Okay. All right. We will set this matter for a status potential determination of trial dates on Friday. June 7 at 8.45 a.m. Anything else to address, Mr. Cash Tory? No, Your Honor. Anything else to address, Ms. Cashman? Not that I'm aware of, Your Honor. Ms. Boone? So how about that? Prosecutor, defense attorney, then what did they do? They look over to the defendant. 
And at this point, I'm going to say, Sarah Boone, can't really complain about people not listening to you. You're almost getting special treatment. Very rarely do they look at my client and say, Mr. Jones, anything you got to say? Or in all of these other cases, they don't usually ask the defendants if they have something they want to or need to say. But guess what? Sarah Boone has pushed her way through, which if you want to give her credit for that, okay. I don't necessarily think it's helped her, but if you want to give her credit for that, now she can have her voice heard on the record in front of the judge. Whenever they're out, they're out of hearing, the judge looks at her after her lawyer. Her lawyer looks at her, which again, to me, means her lawyer's like, hey, you want to talk? You can talk. They all look at her and say, do you have anything to say? Let's see if Ms. Boone has anything to say. It's always a dangerous question to ask. Anything else to address Ms. Cashman? Not that I'm aware of, Your Honor. Ms. Boone? Thanks. All right. We will see you at that date and time. Thank you all very much. Thanks. Nothing to say, which I would say is a good indication and a good thing, but that's exactly how she was with her last lawyer too. It seemed like it was going well after the first hearing. So I am by no means saying this is a great relationship. It's going to work. This is the lawyer we're going to see try her case. Thanks, Judge. Have a great day, y'all. You too. Have a nice weekend as well. You do the same. Thank you. We're going to watch her walk out and then hear them talk about some of the dates so we can get a better idea of how long this delay is really going to be. Was there anything? Was there anything? Was there anything? I'm assuming you're taking us off the main trial docket, sir. Yeah. It was that makes, a PTC and then we had a... There's, there's no sense for, for that to be had. <clears throat> It'll be status determination of trial dates is what will happen. I don't want to have it as a formal pre-trial because we're setting it as a status to determine trial dates anyway. Um, but there's no reason to have the May date. So both May dates are canceled. Correct. Thank you, sir. All right. Thank you all very much. Your Honor, may I approach briefly with Mr. Crazy? All right. So they're not going to have an official pretrial date because usually you have to do certain things and motions are, do are due there. And it's kind of a back set thing to when they actually have a trial date, which they don't yet. So you don't want discovery to cut off or depositions have to be done or expert testimony to have to be in or things like that on the pretrial date, which sometimes you do or motions and limiting have to be in. You don't want to do all that if you're not actually ready for trial and it's just a pick a trial date status. So that's what they did, which really tells you they're kicking the can down the road. And again, I still think end of 24, early beginning of 25 is our best chance for this case to go to trial. Hopefully things keep working in that direction. Hopefully this lawyer stays on the case. It's a good start, but we're just going to keep our fingers crossed because we know that this can go sideways very quickly with Sarah Boone and her lawyer. Uh, let me know what you guys thought of it, what you thought of her lawyer, what you, how you thought this is going, what you think of the delays um, in this case, what you think of Sarah Boone's response and reaction. I love to hear what you guys think about this case and as we continue to go forward on the first case, we were really going to go try to watch live and we'll see how it goes and see if it becomes a thing in the future, um, depending on what you guys want and you guys like. I appreciate you all for joining me. Hit that like button if you guys haven't already and make sure you're subscribed to our page. Thanks for watching another episode of The Lawyer You Know. If you enjoyed the episode, please hit the thumbs up and share with your friends who may be interested here on YouTube. And don't forget to subscribe. You can also follow us on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and TikTok. And don't forget to check out the Lawyer You Know podcast with new seasons dropping every quarter. If you have a case you want to talk to us about, if it's a personal injury case, wrongful death, catastrophic injury, car accident, or slip and fall case, please email us at lawyeryouknow at gmail.com. And of course, all these links I just mentioned are included in the description below on this episode and every episode. So until next time, this is Peter Tregos, the Lawyer You Know.